For a long time I traveled Down a long, lonely road My heart was so heavy In sin I sank low Then I heard about Jesus What a wonderful hour I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out To His saving power <coughs> Thank God I am free Free, free From this world of sin Washed in the blood of Jesus I've been born again Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved By His wonderful grace I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out And show me the way Like a bird out of prison <clears throat> That's taken its flight like a blind man that God gave back his sight. Like the poor wretched beggar that found fortune and fame. I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out through his holy name. Thank God I am free. In the blood of Jesus, I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out and show me the way. Thank God I am free, free, free from this world of sin. I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out and show me the way. I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out and show me the way. Show me the way. Well, I found out earlier that I am no great singer, but um, it is awesome to hear voices bring praise and honor to our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, so, I'm not as cool as Jonathan. I'd like. A ton of slides up there, words, I have like this, so that you guys <laughs> can stare at for like half the sermon. I have a few pictures to show you, then you get to stare at a similar picture to that for the rest of the message. So, um, you know what, let's jump right into this. I have a story to tell you guys. I always do. So, um, as a kid, a younger kid, um, I used to have so much fun with my little brother Timothy um, in our room. We'd like go in there and we'd shut the door and we'd make these like make-believe worlds. And we would choose anything that we wanted to be or anyone we wanted to be with extreme supernatural powers and we would pretend like we were conquering either the world or the bad guys. Yeah, but we were always the good guys, whether we were conquering the world or defeating the bad guys. And... <laughs> Um, I always used to, as the oldest, I had to be the most powerful. <laughs> so I'd wait for him to say his power first, and then I'd go second, so I could top him just a little bit. Um, and he eventually caught on a little bit. And that's when I exacted my revenge. We were out digging for worms, and what he thought was we were digging for worms. I was just planning to hit him in the face with a shovel. 
I promise that was a lie. Um, no. <laughs> but that did end up happening. Um, we were digging for these worms, and he'll tell you the same story, just in a different manner with him as the victim. Um, and we got in trouble because Dad didn't want us digging in the yard. Go figure. We're kids. We're going to dig. Um, and so he came out, and he told us to put it all back. So we did. I did. Timothy stood around and watched. Um, and when I was patting down this dirt to make it level, because I thought it had to be level, getting it back to normal, uh, Tim thought he saw a worm. And so just as I'm coming up with this shovel, he's like, worm. And uh, his face went, shovel. And so he still has a scar right here <laughs> to prove my story. Just don't ask him to tell it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we're going to jump right in and uh, let's pray real quick and then we'll get into the word of God a little bit and see what he has for us. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you for all these folks that uh, came out to worship in your house. God, I ask you to bless them for it. Um, God, I ask that you keep us all safe while we're here and then on our way back to uh, our homes. But while we're here, God, I ask that you'd work on our hearts and... Um, challenge us uh, so that we can go out and we can make ourselves better and uh, be better servants for you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, so the, the message title, it's not up there, as I said before, I'm not that cool, um, is who are you to him? Him being God and you being you. Um, but my first point is who is God to you? First, we got to figure that out before we can figure out who we are to him. Because if we don't know him, how do we know what he's thinking? That was a lot more complicated than I meant it to be. All right, let's turn our Bibles to Isaiah 6.3. And because I'm not cool, I still have to use my phone. Because my Bible's still at college. I'm a great packer. All right. When you're there, shout amen, so I know you're there. Amen. All right, like three of you. <laughs> We're getting there. Uh, a lot of people don't have their Bibles, do they? Okay. <laughs> All right, we're going to start out in verse 3. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now these, these are the angels singing praise and honor to our God. Holy, holy, holy. And that's the first thing that our God is. If I could use one word to describe God, it would be holy. He is, in fact, perfect in every way. And holy just embodies that. It takes powerful, it takes everything we know God to be, which is incredible, amazing, gracious, merciful, all of these incredible traits, and it mushes it all into one word, which is holy. Um, I'm not going to make you turn there because I have a phone and I can do it faster, but I'm going to go to Revelation 4, 8, and if you can beat me there, I'll be very surprised because I already turned there. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Now, if you didn't believe me before, when I read the first verse, you better believe me now that God is holy. And we should be praising him every day, just like these angels, and proclaiming his holy name. Because that's why we're still here. All right, the second thing that he is is omnipresent. He is here now. He was here yesterday. He will be here tomorrow. He is here tomorrow. It's really weird. Um, and I guarantee you will not be able to wrap your mind around it because we are human and we live in time. He does not. All right, Revelation... Nope, Jeremiah 23. Jeremiah 23. There's a lot of flipping. I'm sorry. Actually, I'm not sorry. 
Let's just see. 23. 23. <laughs> Didn't see that coming, did you? Okay. Jeremiah 23, 23. And I am a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? He's everywhere. He fills heaven and earth. He feels present and past. He saved me in the past, and he's still there. He saved me in the future. He's built a mansion for me in heaven for me in the future. And if you don't think that's awesome, what other superpower do you want? I'm just saying. All right, Psalm 139. It's a lot of psalm. Did anyone ever wonder about that? Why didn't David or the psalms write them in larger chapters instead of like 100 and however many there are? All right, getting back on point because I'm really good at getting on rabbit trails. You can thank my dad for that. Uh, <laughs> psalm 139, verse 7. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? <laughs> if I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Just like Jonathan was saying, he was challenging you all to be in the Lord's will. And he can lead you anywhere in the midst of the sea, he can take you to heaven whenever he wants, and that will be his will for your life. You've just got to accept that, just like he was preaching about earlier, and I'm not going to steal his message. All right, third attribute that I was thinking about when I was reading all these passages. He is all-powerful. And this is where we're going to start flipping through these slides. I'm going to show you the first one. Here, maybe. It is, okay, Tim, you're just going to have to do it. All right, flip to the first one. Perfect. Okay, that is Oregon, our beautiful state of Oregon, and that is the United States of America. You can imagine how small Somerville is on Oregon, so imagine that. And then imagine how small we are in Somerville. We are like a pinprick, very small pinprick. Um, in Somerville, and Somerville is a pinprick in Oregon, and Oregon is a small brick in the United States. I didn't ask you to move forward, but that sounds good. Nope, you can go back to that one. Perfect, thank you. All right, and that is the United States compared to the globe. Well, half the globe. Um, we have Alaska up there too, if anyone was worried about that. Um, just not Hawaii. Anyways, um, <laughs> so that is the United States compared to the rest of the world. And then you think of Oregon and Somerville, and then you. So just keep, you know, with me here. Next, that is the sun, and that is planet Earth. <laughs> yeah, we're little. <laughs> Very little. Okay, now the next one, and that is the Milky Way galaxy, and that is our sun. I think my point's across. Um, but what it says right there is 5.1 billion of our sun, the big fiery ball that you saw in the previous one, in case you didn't know that, um, can fit into the UY Scuddy. I don't know who named that, but I need some help. This is the biggest star in the Milky Way galaxy, the UY Scuddy. Um, and the sun can fit 5.1 billion times, approximately, inside of this massive star. Um, it's pretty big. Next slide. Around six, uh, six quadrillion, five hundred twenty trillion Earths could fit into the space that the UI study inhabits. I had to cheat and write those words down because it took me about 10 minutes to decipher that number. Um, and that's how powerful our God is. And that's just a small portion 
of our universe. The Milky Way is the one galaxy inside of our universe. And then somehow, I don't know how they discovered this, but there are multiple universes. God is powerful. And he spoke all of that, plus us, into existence. Um, we're going to read some scripture about this. Revelation, no, not Revelation. I, kept, I keep reading that verse over and over again. Hebrews 1.3. All right. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the world of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Yeah, he's sitting on the right hand of God. After speaking everything into existence. <sighs> I don't know how to, like, make you guys fathom this. It's incredible. I only see, like, three smiles. Okay, Matthew 19, 26. Maybe I should lead by example. Nineteen twenty-six. yes, sir. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Amen. We are little, <laughs> in case you didn't see that. Um, and God holds the world in the palm of his hand. And with us, it's impossible. It's impossible for us to please him, let alone do what he does. So then the next question is, is, who am I? Who are you? And my first thing is, I am loved. So John 3, 16 and 17. If, uh, if you grew up in church, you probably know this one. I do, but I'm going to flip to it just to be courteous. And because I don't know 17. All right. <laughs> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. That's some love, guys. Yeah. And I know you've heard this in Sunday school growing up, or you haven't because you haven't grown up in that atmosphere, but I guarantee you, you know how much God loves you if you're saved. Yeah. And um, in Galatians 2.20, we'll see that a little bit more. There we go. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. He gave himself for me. He gave himself for you, by the way. It's not just for me. And I want you guys to remember that, how much God loves you. He sent his only begotten son to die for you. I guarantee you, my dad loves me a lot, a lot, a lot. And I'm pretty sure he would not send me to die for a bunch of strangers. Actually, I might be wrong about that. But we're going to move right along here. B, I am forgiven. If you are saved, you can claim this. You are forgiven by God. And with all of the dirty, rotten things that you've done, you dirty, rotten sinner, you have been saved and forgiven. 1 John 1, 9. A lot of you probably know this verse and could quote it to me, but I don't know it yet. So... All right, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I have already claimed that promise right there. I am saved, and I know it with my heart. I have confessed my sins, and I do believe on him. And so, yes, he has forgiven me. 
And if you're saved, he's forgiven you as well. And I have like two more verses for that. But we're only going to read like four. Psalms 103. <laughs> I am really looking forward to going back to college and getting back my paper back. Okay. 103, 10 through 14. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. I'm going to read that one more time. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Thank you. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west... So far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame. He remembereth that we are dust. Who are you? You're dust. But dust that is loved. Okay. Refined dust. So where's the east? Someone point who knows this valley. That way? <laughs> For sure it's that way. <laughs> Close. Messing me up. Okay. East, west. If you point in either direction, your fingers will never meet. They will keep going in those directions for eternity. That is how far God hath removed your sins. That is how much you are forgiven. Number, number C. Letter C. I am free from sin. So I've been forgiven of my sins. But I am free from sin. Galatians 5. Turn there real quick. Faster than me, hopefully. Nope, I'm pretty sure I was faster. Okay. Galatians 5.1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And in verse 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Again, this kind of relates to his sermon. Wow, God really does work. Surprise. Um, <laughs> wow. Um, I didn't see that coming, actually. I hadn't looked at that. Okay, well, <coughs> as you can see, God works. And um, we have liberty. We have liberty to choose. God gave us that. He didn't give animals that because they're not as cool. But we have that free will that we use so flippantly every day. Water or soda. Probably take the water. I'm going to take the soda. Um, but every choice that we make will eventually lead to a consequence. We get to choose the action. God gets to choose the consequence. That's how it works. Um, and occasionally, when we choose the action, we ignore that there is a consequence coming. Um, and I want you guys to remember that because you experience it every day. I'm going to make this poor financial decision to buy this brand new 2020 Jeep. Probably a bad idea at 20 years old who has a college bill. But if you make that decision, you're going to suffer the consequences, which is probably debt and then imprisonment for not paying your bills or something like that. John 8, 36. Moving right along. 8, 36. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Yes, that is right. One more time. And if you know it, or you have your Bible open, read it with me. One, two, three, go. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Amen. That is a blessing. That is a promise from God. It's a conditional promise, but it's a promise nonetheless. We are free indeed. Now, I want you to take that, and I want you to roll with it, into the week and your next decision whether that is waking up 
or whether that is driving home safely and not at Mach 20, um, you will deal with the consequences. And let those consequences be good because you were good first. With the situation our world is in, we cannot forget who we are and what our mission is. Amen. And I'm reading this, by the way, because I knew I'd forget it. Though it may seem that the world is coming down on us, because it is, we are Christians, the world hates God and whatever and whoever he loves. That means you. Not me because I'm special. No. <laughs> us. That means us. But don't be discouraged. Because God, he, has the power to create the universe as he also has the power to protect and empower you. So as you're going throughout this next week, as you decide whether or not to call someone you know isn't saved or contact a friend from college, write a letter, because you can still do that these days. Um, make sure to keep God at the forefront of that. And that souls, like Jonathan said, is the number one priority. That's why we're still here after we're saved. If not, we'd be up there. So I want you guys to really think about that as you carry on through the night and through the week. Let's pray one more time, and uh, we'll push it to pastor. Right. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this evening. I thank you for all these hearts that came to hear from your word. And God, I ask that you would bless them. And Lord, that you'd protect them and go with them wherever they go. And Lord, that you would empower them and give them courage and boldness to speak your name and speak your words. God, I thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for us, for taking our sins and for giving us eternal life. God, I ask that you would convict anyone who is not saved here and that they would come to the knowledge of salvation through you. God, I ask again that you'd be with us and embolden us throughout the week. In Jesus' name, amen.